Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at two examples where a cord length type radius is going to be the better option. So if you wanna follow along, you can go to the description of the video and take a look at the supplied data set cord length fillet. To get started, we're gonna focus on this first object here, select our fillet tool, make sure that the radius type is set to constant and select this upper edge and this lower edge here and begin dragging them in. Now, as we do this, you'll note that the fillet width on the bottom edge is wider than the fillet width on the top edge. Now, this is because with a constant or consistent radius type fillet, we're looking at the radius value, not the angle of the faces and how they intersect. So the lower section, the faces intersect at a 90 degree angle, while the angle on the upper faces is going to be a bit steeper, meaning that the fillet width is going to be narrower. To fix this, we can use the cord length, which is going to define the overall length or width of that fillet, rather than the consistent radius. So this is a great way for us to get a fillet on a corner like that and make sure that the edges on the bottom and the edges on the top intersect properly. We can then go back and add a small fillet between those. Once again, using a constant radius is going to give us a wider fillet in the middle there. And if we use a cord length value, we should see that we get a consistent radius value as we transition around that corner. So it's a great option, especially when you have intersecting faces and edges that are at varying angles to help keep their widths consistent. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second example, which is gonna be slightly different because we're gonna start with our chamfer tool. We're gonna select these upper three edges, the ones that intersect in the corner and begin creating a large chamfer. Now this chamfer looks the way it does because the corner type is set to blend. Now, if you're creating a machined part, typically a mitered corner is gonna be what you'll get if you just take a chamfer mill across that edge and you have the chamfer option, which creates a small triangle in the corner. But for us, I'm gonna assume this is gonna be a molded part and I'm gonna use the blended corner. When I use the blended corner, as we rotate this around, the center is gonna be bumped up a little bit. And what this means is that the transition or the width at this edge here is gonna change when we're using the fillet. So if I use my fillet tool and I use a constant radius, go ahead and select the upper and these two edges here, and we just use a value of five millimeters, you can see that it's narrower in the middle. If we change this to cord length, what we're doing now is we're defining the width of that. You'll notice that the value changed to seven millimeters. We're gonna go down to five that gives me a nice consistent width. Now, this is only part of the picture because this doesn't always work. As this value gets larger, for example, if we make it maybe eight, you can see it starts to fail. There are going to be certain ranges where you might see things like these pinched intersections or corners, and that's gonna prevent you from using certain radius or width values. But for the most part, using the cord length is gonna help you drive the consistent width of that fillet as it traverses across edges that have varying angles, whether they're consistent planar faces or if it's a transition like this that's smooth in the middle. Now, in reality, what I would generally do with a part like this is come back to my surface tools and get rid of that face in the middle, and I would likely patch it. I would group all the edges together and use something like tangency to try to smooth it out a bit more than the original face. So that is gonna give me a good option that I can knit back together, turn that thing back into a solid body and have maybe a little bit cleaner intersection. So those are two use cases for using a cord length definition for your fillet. There are plenty of others and we do have a video talking about all the different styles of fillet. So make sure that you do check that out if you're looking for more information. Also keep in mind, we do have a merch store linked to this channel as well as a website, learneverythingaboutdesign.com. If you are looking for courses, we are adding courses to the website from time to time. Currently we have PCB design, we have a bunch of courses for absolute beginners, and we have a free course for modeling efficiency. So make sure that you do check out those two locations. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.